Hey, I'm Joe and I'm gonna teach you how to be more frugal than Scrooge. I've seen a lot of tutorials on how to eat for like $20 a week, $10 a week, $1 a day, but I must have cracked the code because I, when I first graduated from college, found out how to eat for $20 per month. Was it healthy? No. Did I shave five years off my life? Probably. But it was cheap. So I'm gonna tell you how I did that. Step one, learn to enjoy drinking tap water. Assuming yours is drinkable, of course. Water is already healthier than just about anything else you can drink anyway. Soda's just filled with sugar. This way you'll avoid messing up your circadian rhythm by drinking a lot of caffeine. And it's free. Drinking fountains everywhere. One shower per month is going to use more water than you will by drinking from your own tap water. So if you're paying a water bill, then this isn't gonna put a dent in it. Not to mention that tap water is fluoridated. Is fluoridated, 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 fluoridated. It does help with tooth decay. Buying drinks of any kind is going to waste a lot of money. Purified water is good, but distilled water is problematic. Because what that pretty much means is that they've taken away everything that isn't just water. You would think that's good, except that tap water actually has a lot of good minerals that they've added for you, like magnesium and calcium. So if you're going to drink bottled water, then at least look at the nutrition facts. Because yes, even water is more than just water. Step two, stop going out to eat ever. It tastes great because I go out to eat all the time, granted, but even a meal for one dollar is going to be more expensive than what you can get out of grocery shopping. So unless you're being given the food for absolutely free, just don't do it. But if you're like me and you can't resist because you don't have self-control, then here are some options for you. Download every single app you can find for every restaurant that you go to. They tend to have deals that you won't find anywhere else, just on the app. Burger King and Wendy's are kind of competing for my business the most right now because both of them I can, for a $1 purchase, can get an entire heaping ton of food along with it for free. At Wendy's I tend to get a free breakfast baconator, which has been a regularly reoccurring deal they offer, and I just buy a little sausage biscuit or something, and I've got more than half of the calories I need for the whole day already. At Burger King you get a free kids meal with your order, six piece chicken nugget, fruit juice, fries, buy a McChicken, and you've got a ton of calories right there. Not very healthy at all, but it is cheap. If you're on the lookout for deals like this, then I would also suggest following their social media pages. Restaurants are very active on Twitter for whatever reason, and they post promos and all sorts of deals all the time. Just yesterday for the Super Bowl, DiGiorno was giving away free pizzas to people who were keeping up with their Twitter account. On Reddit, there are a number of different forums dedicated to various restaurants and also just to free food in general. So if there's a promotion, then those people will know about it. They'll also tell you how to exploit a lot of the menus. So it's very helpful. Just make sure that following all of these accounts and forums won't tempt you to spend more money than you would otherwise. Also, when you're buying food, you probably will want to make sure that you are ordering single items individually because while yes, technically combos are cheaper, that's only when you take into account the drink, which as we have established is a huge waste of your money. Option number three, rebates, coupons, and gift card apps. A lot of these I didn't care to look into, but I eventually realized that this is a huge potential source of freebies if you're willing to look into it. Some might be tempted to initially look into receipt apps like Receipt Pal and Receipt Hog, where you submit a receipt, they give you points, and you turn those in for gift cards. Well, I realized that out of all the apps and suggestions out there, this is probably the only one that really is a complete waste of time. You get so few points for every receipt that you would literally make more money by working any minimum wage job in any state for the same amount of time. I've been working on these apps religiously the last few months, and I have only cashed out on one of them one time for a $5 coupon. Huge waste of time. But other apps are helpful, like for example, S'more. It replaces your lock screen with an ad and gradually accumulates points in return for marketing ads to you. And without any effort at all, eventually you will have enough points to cash out. I've done this a few times and it's great free money. There's also Ibotta, which is an app that will give you X amount of dollars for buying certain specific item at certain specific store. There's a whole list of stores and a whole list of items that you can just browse through. And once you get to $20, you can cash out and it'll just send you the money. And it is fantastic. I have saved literally hundreds of dollars just by 
using this app. Like they just give you food that is free after the rebate. I've even tried foods that I would have never tried otherwise if it were not for this. Plant-based chicken nuggets shaped like Mickey Mouse? Not that bad. Uh, next on the list we have Shopkick, which is basically the exact same thing, except instead of telling you exactly how many dollars you are earning, it gives you points that you then trade in for either PayPal or a gift card or something. It's not nearly as lucrative, but it is still pretty good, especially when an item appears on both Ibotta and Shopkick. Then you can combine them and you're essentially getting paid to get that food. Coupons, coupons.com that is is a website and an app. It just has groceries, it's good. Rarely does it have something that I want, but every now and then it has a very good item that I can get for free. And I've used it a couple times, it's good. There are a few other apps that rarely offer something good like uh, Swagbucks or Checkout 51, but they fluctuate a lot. What really ties all of this together is another website slash app entirely called Crazy Coupon Lady, KCL, which is just a blog where these people will keep track of all sorts of promos and coupons and rebates and things like on Ibotta and Shopkick, and they'll tell you when you can get things for super cheap. They'll notify you when they find things that are on both apps. You can get things for negative $2. Of course, they can't keep track of local promos and deals, so you're not completely off the hook, but it is really really good and finally step four the actual grocery shopping this is what i assume most of you guys are here to actually hear about what food do you buy in order to survive off of pennies well there's two ways to go about this one is the method that has no regard for your health whatsoever just cheap as possible i would not recommend this way that would be how to survive off pennies not how to live off pennies the second way to do this by sacrificing as little of your health as possible and i think i can make this happen Oh my gosh. And there's one more app that will help us to do that. This is called Fujicate. And it actually has a big directory of all kinds of foods and brands and things like that. And it grades each one based on how healthy it is. It tells you whether or not it has a lot of sugar, carcinogens, artificial flavors, how much trans fat is in there, all kinds of things is great. For the most part, I'll be focusing on things available at Walmart because that's the store that's nearest to me. And that means just about everything I talk about will probably be from the brand Great Value, which is Walmart's store brand. But if you go to like Aldi's or something like that, you'll probably have something that's like the equivalent. I'll be listing each item based on its price per pound. If you want to calculate that yourself for something else you've found, just divide the cost by the number of ounces. This is the price per ounce. Then multiply that by 16, since there are 16 ounces per pound. One other unfortunate note is that this heavily depends on where you live, and when you're doing this, and how much you eat. I live in the Midwest where the price to live is dirt cheap, so food is cheaper. Of course, I don't live near California or Florida where orange groves are everywhere, so oranges might be a little more expensive. Will I be accounting for any of that? No, no, I'm not a crazy person. So I don't wanna spend 12 hours calculating how much you need to eat for each and every single one of those situations. But this should still tell you the best route to go if you want to eat cheap. So here is your official grocery list. Number one is eggs. They are cheap, they are easy, they are versatile, and they have a whole lot of nutrients and protein and stuff. 12 for a dollar is pretty dang good. It is an A minus on Fujicate. Bread. Bread isn't very healthy on its own, especially if you're eating white bread because a lot of the nutritional value has been removed at that point. Whole wheat bread just means you have the whole kernel of wheat, the whole grain there. White literally means that it, they have taken out a lot of it. So don't just go for whole wheat, go for 100% whole wheat, because that means it has 100% of the, the whole wheat. It really is better for you, because that change alone, in my experience, was enough to fix my cholesterol levels, which were kind of wonky at one point. I switched to 100% whole wheat, and suddenly uh, things got better. $1.18 for a pound. But according to our old pal Fujicate, it is also highly processed. So if you care about that, the nature's own 100% whole wheat is probably your best bet at $1.90 per pound. Alternatively, you can also try to make your own bread from scratch. It's cheaper and healthier in the long run if you make it whole wheat, but it takes time to learn and to make. And do you really expect me to go through the cost of every single ingredient just so I can figure out per unit of weight if that's actually cheaper than a loaf of bread? Yeah, I am gonna do that. Here's the math. It's $1.08 per loaf. The recipe claimed it's made 1 to 1.5 pounds of bread. So at best, 72 cents per pound. At worst, $1.08. And is all that really worth saving a dime off great value? No, but it can be kind of fun. Our next option is rice, specifically brown rice. Probably better than a lot of breads, and it is a lot cheaper. 
And if you're willing to eat brown rice, you've got a pretty healthy meal in your hands. 78 cents per pound and an A on Fujikate. But that little bag will more than double in size after you've cooked it because of all the water. So in truth, that brown rice is actually selling for 28 cents per pound. The only downside is that it's easiest to cook rice when you have a rice cooker, which is a little bit more hassle than just making a sandwich. Bananas, it's a banana, eat it. 42 cents per pound. And if you have a blender, you can even make use of those peels because they can be made edible. Or if you need another variety of protein, Protein, boneless chicken thighs are the way I would go. $2.06 per pound or boneless chicken breasts at $1.98 per pound. Thighs are dark meat, which means they have more fat and are a little bit tastier, but it's also the good kind of fat. You might be inclined to think that normal chicken breasts are cheaper, not the boneless ones. And technically that is true, except the price per pound that they present you with does not take into account that you can't eat bones. Great value southern hash browns. $1.12 per pound. This is one of the cheapest foods you're going to find. And somehow they're an A- minus on Fujikate, so I guess potatoes are healthy. You can also do great value mashed potatoes at $1.55 per pound, which also gained twice their original volume when they cook, leaving you with roughly 77 cents per pound. B plus on Fujikate and vegetables. I am loathe to talk about these because I never eat vegetables. I never got past that stage of childhood where you only eat chicken nuggets and fruit snacks, so I don't like vegetables. But I did not realize how cheap vegetables really are, canned vegetables specifically. But it's 53 cents per pound. Frozen vegetables are pretty cheap too, but the canned stuff is just absurd. I've learned something in making this video. I no longer have an excuse to be unhealthy. That upsets me because I don't like vegetables. We have cereal. Granted, most cereal is horribly unhealthy. It's essentially just sugar topped with grains that have been stripped of what makes them healthy. But there are a few outliers. Cornflakes are usually what's available at my local grocery store at $1.26 per pound. But shredded wheat is probably your best option. Not the frosted kind though. The stuff is like 20% less healthy because of all the sugar that it's added. And if you're gonna eat cereal, you might as well add some milk. At $3.10 per gallon, 38 cents per pound. Just drink it in moderation and you'll probably be fine. So where does that leave us? For a total of $20.82, you can get 27 pounds of food. And if you combine that with the various other coupons and rebates and stuff like that, you will easily have a pound of food for every day of the month. And on average, people only eat three to four pounds per day. Okay, we'll just have to rework this a little bit. Um, instead of instead of bread, uh, we can you can do rice. Like, like a whole lot of rice. Instead of hash browns, you can get canned potatoes. They're a little bit cheaper. Instead of chicken, uh, we, we could just get a whole lot more eggs. They're more nutritious anyway, right? Probably, I think, I, I, don't, I don't really know. But they're cheaper in bulk, so, so eggs, lots of eggs. So replace the 12 pack with a 60 pack. And now we have $3 left, so uh, let's just get twice as many vegetables, 12 cans. And that leaves us with, at $21.59, uh, 42.7 pounds of food. And if you coupon really, really hard, you can get quite a lot of freebies as well. So like, you know, during the holidays, like Thanksgiving, I got, an, they were offering an entire Thanksgiving dinner for free on Ibotta. That's, you can easily get like 10 pounds of food for free that way, which gives us like 50 pounds of food, which is still not enough. Unfortunately, this is about as far as you can go without sacrificing at least a little bit of healthiness. Not even a pure banana diet at 42 cents per pound or pure milk, 38 cents per pound, is enough to get us there. Rice alone can carry us further to 71 pounds of food. So the solution then is to find something else that expands when you cook it. Uh, so I, d I did some research. Um, the answer is not pancakes. And it's not even ramen, shockingly. Rice might actually be the cheapest food you can get in bulk, which leaves us just one option to replace our brown rice with white rice. It's still a B plus on Fujikate, but you know, brown rice is just better. So you get two 20 pound bags of great value, long grain enriched rice, plus one 10 pound bag of the same. Results in $21.50 for 50 pounds of rice that when cooked will provide you with 164.5 pounds of food for the month. That is 5.3 pounds of rice for every single day of the month on the longest month of the year. Almost six pounds in February, which is almost twice as much as we actually need. So let's go back and uh, adjust this a little bit for health reasons, shall we? Let's say 20 pounds of rice instead, dozen eggs, 12 cans of vegetables, three cans of potatoes, box of cereal, gallon of
of milk, and that leaves us 90.48 pounds of food for $21.62. That is roughly three pounds a day for 30 days. If you need more, swap some stuff out for rice. White rice isn't the healthiest, but it isn't the worst either. White bread is worse. Mix it up with some vegetables, some eggs, and you know, well, I'm not a doctor, but I think you'll probably be okay. I've spent a disgusting amount of time researching this, and I'm sure I've missed a lot. For example, some honorable mentions. Great value popping corn is the cheapest, healthiest snack you're ever gonna find. Corn tortillas are even cheaper and are great for throwing rice and eggs into. I also plan to include a lot of references in the description, which will in itself include a list of various resources for you to check out. I'll make a follow-up to this eventually, but I'm not just gonna remake this whole list. The food market is something that's gonna be changing way too much for that. If you have any tools or resources you think I should know about, let me know in the comments. I might include them in the follow-up. Do feel free to share this with all your financially impaired friends and family. Subscribe for more tutorials. Let me know what else you want me to show you how to do. Like if you liked it. Don't if you don't. Adios.